Hey guys, I hope you're having a great day and you're out doing something you love. I'm up under the apple trees. It's a beautiful day. It's been a really noisy, busy day out here in the neighborhood though. Somebody's down there cutting the grass. They've been working on a roof over here at the old hotel. And there's a Volkswagen bus rally going on at the campground across the river. So there's been like 1970s Volkswagen buses going up and down the road. They're really cool. A lot of them are converted. That might be worth checking out. You guys want to see any of that? Some old Volkswagen buses at a rally? I may go check that out. Let me know if you want to see it in the comments below. But for today's daily... I wanted to talk about something that I noticed as I was putting away relics today. There's relics spread all over the house from doing these dig logs. And I was noticing a common thread in a lot of these relics as I was putting them away today. And I thought I should mention that to you guys because it may help with your research. And I didn't really go over this in detail in the research portion of the dig log. And that common thread is that almost every relic I've ever found was found along the old roads. And there are old roads all over the country from Virginia to California to Oregon. And these are the roads that the original settlers used to settle that area. If you can research where these roads were by reading books and looking for old road names, they've seldom ever changed if if at all and you can also look at old maps sometimes the road names themselves will give you a clue if it's called the old road say the old Tacoma Highway or the old Dalton Pike those types of names should stick out to you as old names other names like Stagecoach Road, Stage Road, Pike, Turnpike these are all great old road names that you should be looking for so I want to show you some relics that I found along old roads and I'm going to start with some relics I found at an old stagecoach stop. Now I believe there was an inn or a tavern at this site and it was definitely a stagecoach stop that was marked on maps. So the first items I'm going to show you are a couple locks and these are iron locks. One of them has a brass lock plate here and it is marked patent with a WR and a crown. And I believe that that was the king of England at the time. And this was a tax probably paid on this lock as it was brought to the Americas. I believe these locks are from the early 1800s. Really like them. Some other items from the stagecoach stop were a lot of suspender buckles. I mean, a lot of suspender buckles. And I don't know if these were lost maybe doing the wash for travelers that stopped at the stagecoach or if maybe they were lost by the travelers as they got in and out of the wagons. But they found a whole lot of those. I thought that was really interesting. Some buttons, tokens, coins. Found a couple Indian arrowheads, Native American arrowheads. And I always kind of imagined some Native Americans coming in and attacking a wagon as it was coming through and making off with all their goods and booty. And let's see, what else? Oh, a lot of Civil War relics came from this stagecoach stop. A lot of Civil War mini balls. And this is actually the site where I took JD to find the very rare Confederate pistol bullets, the foreign mold Confederate pistol bullets. They're also known as MM number 97 from the McGee and Mason book. And some jewelry items came from the site. A lot of rings came out of the site. And a couple other what's it's and doodads, as you can see from the video. And some other items I found along the old roads I wanted to show. Um, the first of which is this Confederate script eye button, an infantry button. And this was found about 10 feet from an old stage road, right up against a log barn that was built in the 1840s. And I always imagined a Confederate soldier marching down the road and needing to stop and take a break and plopping down against this barn and maybe taking a nap or something and losing this button and me finding it 150 years later. Pretty amazing find. I love that button even though it's crumbly and falling to pieces. Another find from the stagecoach stop is this lid. It is a beautiful intricate lid. I believe it is to a ginseng jar and those blue stones you see are actually real sapphires. And that dark blue color is very desirable in sapphires. And I imagine this piece is from the mid to early 1800s as well. And the last piece I want to show you from near the old roads is a 
find that I thought was trash when I found it. Well, I didn't think it was trash. I thought it was a brass rivet, and I find a lot of brass rivets from belts and that sort of thing from the 1800s, and that's what I thought this was. But I came home, and I emptied out my finds pouch, and luckily I check everything twice, and I take everything out of the field. When I'm digging in a field, I take all the aluminum, all the trash, everything I dig so that I don't have to dig it up again, and so I can get the trash off the landowner's property. But I clean this find up, and I saw silver start to show through, and it turns out it was an 1853 seated Liberty dime that had had this little stud added onto it to make it into a collar stud. And on the opposite side, the initials ABS are carved in, along with some intricate, beautiful flower or sun patterns around the outside. It was a real shocker and one of my favorite finds really of all time, a very personal item with someone's initials on it from this 1853 seated Liberty dime. And all these relics were from along the old roads. So get out there, look at those old maps, read those old books, and nail down the old road names. It doesn't have to be any site in particular. If you can find fields along those old roads, you're probably going to find some good stuff. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, share, subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.